So from notes on the synthesis of form, uh, the, the important thing is actually what you get in the first two chapters. So you don't have to read the whole thing. In particular, the latter half was a kind of uh, early effort that he abandoned and, and improved in later works. Um, but the very beginning is essential because we get three concepts that every designer you would think would already be using, but it, it turns out to not be the case. These three concepts are form, context, and fit. So when it comes to form and context, the, 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 the subject here is anytime we have a design problem, what we have is there's some part of the whole world that we have decided we are going to uh, create or change. And this is the form, right? The thing we're going to make or the thing we're going to modify. The way that we get to a good form is by looking at the context that the form fits into. And in, in especially, we're not just looking at a kind of a physical context. So this isn't like, uh, you know, uh, the couch has to be the right size to fit into the living room, right? This would be a very kind of naive version of, of form context fit. The context really refers to the dynamics, the, the activities that the people are trying to do, the, thi the things that are going on that either we can go with the grain or against the grain. And so uh, very often, actually, what happens is uh, when we kind of talk to other designers, uh, there, there easily tends to be this kind of... Um, well, I don't know what to call it other than a bit of a of a a kind of a style-based kind of ideology. There tends to be at a given time uh, for a given generation of designers a kind of right way to do things, right? Which is based on certain styles and certain forms. If we have a certain kind of right way to do things, then what happens is we end up kind of making software or making buildings or or creating presentations or giving talks or whatever it is that sort of follow a standard format without understanding why. Actually, there isn't one way to design anything, but at the same time, there isn't a kind of anything goes spirit either. There's a relationship, there's an empirical relationship between the, th the, the thing that people are trying to do and the way that our form uh, harmonizes with that or enables that or fits with that. And the judgment, the judgment of success is actually the fitness, the relationship between these two things. This is really very, very important in, in, in everyday practical design work because we often see the opposite. What tends to happen is uh, somebody creates a requirement for what the project should become. And in nine, nine times out of 10, this requirement is actually expressed in terms of the form. What do I mean? If, if we work with a client and, 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 and we have a discussion with the client and we agree together that what we should do is there should be a, a software that has this button and it should have this screen. And when you click here, it should go over there. All of this is describing the form. Anytime, or let's take another example. If we get a, a request from a customer and the customer says, please, can you add a capability to change a setting so that when I go over on this screen, I can have a new permission setting. This is also describing a change in the form. If we describe how the form should be, and then we go and we, perf and we perform that change, and then we try to say, did we succeed or not? Did things get better? Did we do what we kind of should have done? Now we have a circularity because our definition of success was already based in the form. We have no meaningful fitness function. On the other hand, if our definition of success isn't saying the, there, sh there should have been a button there or there should have been a, 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 a path to go from here to here, but rather if the definition of success was a struggle, something that someone was trying to do that they weren't able to do, 
right? If we understood the behavior that people were trying to do in some context, now we actually have two things that are of totally different categories. The thing that people are trying to do and the actual structure of the form. And then we actually have a definition of fitness that we can work with. Okay. So this is, this is a very deep subject that, that ties into um, basically any time we get into a conversation about what we should be building, we have to fight against this and, 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 get, and, tr and figure out how to get people to actually describe the context in a form agnostic way so that we can understand the behaviors that we're trying to enable independent of a particular form. And then we have a proper fitness relationship. Okay. So this is the first thing. And there's a, there's an excellent uh, chapter in notes on the synthesis of form called goodness of fit. And this is just fundamental, fundamental. And we'll, as you'll see, we can build actually the rest of uh, the concepts we need kind of out of this basic trio of form, context, and fit. Okay. 